Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our podcast. My name is Hannah. And I'm Rachel. And this is the You Talking to Me podcast. Today is week two of Sports Month. So we will be talking about a movie that is about bobsledding. It's called Cool Runnings. I'll give you a quick little recap before we jump into our discussion. Cool Runnings tells the story of the first ever Jamaican bobsled team. Four unlikely men come together with the help of a washed up Olympic athlete to do something no other Jamaicans have done before. No one believes that three runners, a pushcart champion, and a former Olympian will actually be able to make the Olympics. Will these five men be able to achieve the impossible and make Jamaica proud? Well, guess what? We're going to spoil the answer and tell you what happens. So (laughs) you'll see. Oh my gosh. So I've seen this movie before. I think my parents have a VHS of this at their house, which is very funny to me to think that I first watched this on a VHS and I'm watching it on a streaming service. Um, But this movie I have found, fun fact number one, is consistently in the top 10 like sports comedy movies. And I know why, because it's hilarious. And I will just say this, for a movie in the 90s, most of the comedy did not come from the fact that they are Jamaican. You know what I mean? Like making fun of their race or anything. So that was shocking. It aged fairly well. Um, I did not look up specifically if, you know, Jamaicans found this movie to be good or hurtful or, or bad, good representation or anything. But just you know from my white self no I thought it was pretty good and I wasn't cringing at the movie which like I said a 90s movie featuring a primarily black cast is quite shocking for this day and age yes very true and Disney did that they were they were doing something um I will say that something that could seem like it's offensive is that when I was looking up, doing some research, oh yeah, I've said this before, if you're not an actual researcher, you're not supposed to call or say you're doing research, you're supposed to say you're gathering information. After a quick Google search. <laughs> After a quick Google search, there, I'm trying to word it as closely to what I read, but basically what it said was that the actors, all four uh, the people who played Senka, Doris, Junior, and Yule, which are the four men who will be the bobsled team, um, they had to change the way they were talking to talk more like, quote unquote, Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, because I don't remember if it was Walt Disney or someone else said that otherwise, no white people or something along the lines of that would not, they like would not be able to understand the men because it's too Jamaican so there was that they changed their accents to sound more like Sebastian from the Little Mermaid because otherwise something like the white people wouldn't be able to understand them so there there is that (laughs) no really I'm glad they accommodated for me because I don't get a lot of accommodations as a white person so really glad that finally someone's been thinking about us okay yeah, I've never had any privilege or anything in my whole life. <laughs> <sighs> Finally. If you can't tell, that is very sarcastic, people. Um, hopefully that comes across because Rachel and I both would agree that we are very privileged. We have a lot of things given to us or handed to us just because we are white. Um, and I don't love that fact. So <laughs> yeah, I did not come across that. that that wasn't something in my extensive research just kidding but that I didn't come across that I came across something very shocking that I want to touch later about comparing this movie to the real life events but I don't want to I don't want to touch on that quite yet because I was very shocked to find out some of the stuff but I want to real quick so one thing that I loved that the writers did was the four characters of the bobsled team are extremely different and so I actually kind of like wrote down the four guys and wrote down kind of their primary traits and this is something a lot of people who are new writers struggle with is when they have like kind of an ensemble cast or not one 
main character struggle with is finding different voices for all of them. But these writers killed it. I will say like I could have been blindfolded and they all could have had the same voice in a voice changing machine. And I would have been able to tell who each person was based on the things that they would say. So Darius, he's the leader. He's the persistent one and he's extremely responsible. And he's the first one who wants to do this bobsled team thing. Then we have Sanka, who's his best friend. He's the funny guy. He doesn't really like to be told no. He just is like, he's like, whatever I think is best. You know, he's kind of not ignorant, but maybe just like the whole ignorance is bliss. Like, oh, life is just great and there's no negativity, you know? Um, Yule is an angry man. He wants to leave Jamaica. He wants bigger and better things for himself. And I think that's where some of the anger comes from is feeling stuck. And he's also not a team player at all. He's like, oh, we're a bobsled team. Mm, But I'll get my own face on the Wheaties box. Not with you guys, right? And then Junior is, he's the rich kid on the island. He's very submissive, doesn't have a very strong will and can't stand up for himself very well. And then Irving actually, who is the coach, has his own personality. He's very blunt and just unimpressed with life, basically, when we meet them. And they all do change very much throughout the movie. And I love that each of them gets growth as well. I love that. The characters, I don't care. Like, I don't care who you are, like the characters, arcs and just development are beautiful. Very impressed with these writers. Yeah. And so it starts with Darice is running because Darice, Yule and Junior are the runners. And what happens is they're running to see their qualifying times if they're going to represent Jamaica at the Olympics for I don't remember which distance they're running, like maybe 50 meters, 10 meters, 100 meters. The 100. There we go. <laughs> 10 meters. Who would run that far? You could skip <laughs> that. <laughs> we. I might make the Olympics. Shot. Yeah. Um, and Darice's dad was an Olympic runner as well. And so what happens is Darice, Junior, Yule are make it on their marks, get that go. They start running and junior trips and along with him going down he takes down Doris and Yule. Yule um, shows his aggressiveness pretty quickly. He's pissed off and hates junior and Doris is just like okay this happened like I it's not fair can I try again but then the man in charge of who's going to the Olympics was like no like it happened you can't undo that and he's like well I just want to go to the Olympics somehow and he's like like isn't there any spots and something or something and then somehow they end their conversation landing on a bobsled team oh because he sees a picture of his father with coach Irv well he wasn't coach Irv but this was (laughs) the dumbest part of the movie and I know they have to get into it somehow I understand they have to find a reason for him to want to seek out Irving and well he sees a picture yes of his father and coach Irv on the wall they both have like medals around their necks and supposedly coach Irv was trying to get Darius's father to join the bobsled team because he thought Olympic sprinters would be a great way um or a great transition into bobsledding because you have to have such a quick start and then get into the bobsled. Like that takeoff time is everything because basically the rest of it is gravity and how well you take the turns. Okay. And so that takeoff time is very, very important. And Therese is like, Hmm, this picture got it. Going to go recruit some people. And I just was like, this is too convenient to see this picture here. I was like, that's too dumb. But I, after watching this movie, I don't care anymore because it is like one of the only like parts that just seemed too coincidental to me. Everything else seemed to have a reason, but I don't, I don't like coincidences. Yeah, that part definitely was coincidental. But then Doris is holding these auditions, if you will. Well, first he goes and finds Coach Irv. And he is at a bar, which kind of seems like it's his bar. 
right? Yeah, I don't remember if it's his bar or not, but he's always at that bar, like betting on horse races and betting on other gambling things. And maybe it is his bar. Maybe he has a lot of money from the Olympics. I don't know. Probably not when we find out what happened in the past, but he, I think it might be his bar, but he moved to Jamaica after his whole Olympics career ending. Yeah, and I don't know why he moved. Did it say why he moved to Jamaica? I'm not sure, but I think he just wanted to get out of America after what he did. Yeah, and I guess first, Doris would talk to Senka because Senka goes with him and they find Coach Irv and he's betting on these horses and he's mad because it's not going the way he wants and you know these guys are like can you please try to be our coach and long story short they get to like this audition period where they're showing a video of what the bobsledding is and all the men disappear and then (laughs) Yule shows up and Junior shows up and against all odds I suppose you could say or we obviously knew it was going to happen but they decide that they are going to be a team and Yule still hates Junior and Doris is like, oh, I forgive you. And Sanka's like just trying to be kind of funny to get everyone to have a good time. And Coach Irv in the beginning still is not super into it, I would say. Like he's kind of grumpy and like, just let me be. But also I know you're not going to leave me alone. So I'm going to try to help out some. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of like bringing his idea back to him with people who are actually willing to do it, because all of these guys, except for Senko, were actually, like, good enough to be at the Olympic trials for Jamaica, so that's pretty cool, and um, I do love that they set up this conflict between those three guys right away and then so that when they have to join the team you don't have to build some sort of like reason that they hate each other it was literally one like two minute scene and that's enough to when we see junior show up we're like oh shoot oh god this isn't gonna be good you know it doesn't take a lot and they did a really good job with that setup and yeah, this is where we find out, you know, Yule is not a team player because he's like, we might all be on the same team, but you are not my teammates. And this was just kismet. I don't know. This it created a lot of funny moments in terms of like training them to bobsled. And that whole montage was beautiful and just hilarious because we got to see with like almost no dialogue in a lot of these parts all of these people's characters pop out when they're training like the pull-ups was really funny because you see you will just like ah I'm doing it because I'm strong and tough and then you see Sanka like going pretty easily but you see underneath coach Irv is like lifting him up to do the pull-ups which coach Irv is played by John Candy in one of his last roles before he passed away actually so Rest in peace. I don't know a whole lot about John Candy, but he has been beloved for a while in the comedic acting world. And he was wonderful in this movie, but I thought he did a great job. I think he did a great job too. Oh, I guess something we might want to touch on for people who haven't seen this movie or don't know what a push cart is. So Senka's the man who is a push cart champion, which I don't know if it's specific to Jamaica. I don't know if there's other places that do this, but isn't there something in Little Rascals, though, that's similar? I don't know if that's push cart or like a race car or whatever, but there's this race with all these people. It looks like there's always one little kid matched up with an older adult, and the adult is pushing while the kid is steering. I could be wrong on that, but it's basically like these little carts or cars that you make to race and you go down this steep hill hillside in Jamaica and you see who can get down to the bottom first and without crashing and it looked scary (laughs) yeah I don't know if this was you know if it's native to just like Jamaica does it mostly but um 
it really does happen because that is part of how the real Jamaican bobsled team came to be was just a quick one of the changes that was made was two American businessmen were in Jamaica and saw a push cart championship and was like this is kind of like bobsledding and decided to try and find a team you know for that so that's one of the changes was you know it wasn't you know one of the guys dreams to do it because his father was an Olympic champion and things like that so that was one of the changes made another one was that it was actually it started off as a two-person team because you can do two and four and it started off with two people and then they switched to four and the people that they decided they were going to train it was something like a week or three weeks like it was very very short amount of time that they had to train the other people for the sledding whereas for the movie to even just pretend to be sledding because they never actually went down and raced it was not allowed they started by pushing the cart and they jumped in but they never did the actual run and they had three months just to learn how to jump into the cart so that's a big difference (laughs) yeah I would say and you know the inexperience really does cause a lot of problems you know in this race or in this sport and John Candy's character Irv touches on it in the movie where he's like you know if you know the driver if you don't you know do it properly or learn it or can be completely focused you could be responsible for everybody's life because you are going down that um I don't know if they call it like a luge or a track or whatever it's called they, they go down it very, very, very fast, like 130 kilometers an hour, even more. And if you crash, you could break your neck. You could get such a bad concussion. You could fall out and break all your limbs, get run over by a bobsled, like anything you could die. And that's how, because Senka's the quote unquote driver of the push cards. And he wanted to be the driver of the bobsled and a coach of me, Doris, the driver and convince Senka to basically say, oh, no, that's okay, when he said all of these things to him, which was a funny way of doing it. Like I said, this is a comedy. It's hilarious. They make serious things sound funny in ways, and Senka is our comedic relief just on the team, and so it was perfect. Yeah, and, like, they'll crash, and Doris will be like, Senka, you dead, man? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm dead. (laughs) Yeah, he would say that a lot. That was just, like, his catchphrase or their little interaction that they said all the time very funny and you can also see so they start their training in Jamaica they move up to Canada somewhere I can't remember if it's Calgary something I think it's Calgary and they actually did film in Calgary and Alberta and so and in Jamaica and then uh they so they get to Calgary and all these men are like snow ice like what it's negative degrees outside I've never experienced this and they're not totally taking everything so seriously immediately for their training because they're kind of just like oh yeah it's gonna be easy you know like it can't be that hard and then they're watching these other teams and trying to actually perform on ice for the first time and they're like whoa like this is actually hard and then after they get disqualified for something that for some reason my brain can't remember why they got disqualified um so let me look up what it was called they they created this thing called the international alliance of winter sports for the movie which is not a real thing in real life each individual sport or sport category has their own committee in the olympics you know so it'd be the bobsleigh and whatever committee but the international alliance of winter sports had a meeting apparently and decided that you actually had to race in a competition in your sport before the Olympic trials. And apparently the old rule was like, if it was the same year as the Olympic trials, the Olympic trials counted as your race for the year. And, um, you know, and they also were like, well, we don't want you to be, or we, we don't want there to be 
cause for embarrassment and John Candy comes out with one of the best lines and goes oh I'm sorry I didn't realize four black guys in bobsleds could make you blush and I was like "Mm, snap he got them right there and I was like absolutely true like they basically they made the people sound a little racist in it which might have been their intent but it also like was obviously they're coming from a place that never gets cold so that also is the joke but there are plenty of places that are really warm that have white people that they could have you know if they wanted to make a fictional story could have done but I think they were trying to put in some hints of racism in the thing because the Winter Olympics are very white very white but you know this team made it very apparent that Anybody can qualify for anything if you are determined enough. So it doesn't matter where you come from. doesn't matter what you look like. You can do whatever your heart sets out to do. Yeah. You have determination and willpower to do it. You got it. But and- like, with that Olympic, like with the terms of the disqualification, we do find out around that same time that Coach Irv, when he was an Olympian, cheated. Okay. We see some tension between him and former teammates who are now also coaches we see some tension except for one guy he reaches out to who is still really nice to him and does he has to get a bobsled he loans him a bobsled for like five thousand dollars or whatever and but it has to be like under the table secret you know because no one wants to be sort of associated with coach Irv. we're like why turns out he hid some weights in the front of the bobsled to make him go faster and the head of the this international alliance sports was his coach which there's some tension there and we find out he's probably just doing these things to make sure jamaica doesn't qualify because he doesn't like coacher and coacher basically calls him out and goes don't punish my guys punish me if you're gonna do it if I have to get kicked out they can do it without me like I don't have to be here kick me out do things to me but don't do it to them they had nothing to do with my past so I really thought that was a good moment of character to show that he has changed that he regrets what he did and has learned from it but I understand why people would think that he was a bad person still or like it's the same sport you know he might still cheat again you know or something so I could understand that so after this whole thing when they get put back into the Olympics is when we see them actually take to wow stutter city there we actually see them take their training seriously which I really like to see that transformation of like oh we can just do it to like oh no we actually have to work for this and I like how Coach Irv's personality changes too. It was just really nice to watch their story. And obviously we have already just stated that the Winter Olympics is like very white scene. And I was like very impressed with how attractive all the people were in this movie besides the white people. The white people are not. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> all the jamaicans i was like wow what a beautiful country and beautiful humans <laughs> oh my gosh well um i don't know if that was intentional i don't know if the slavic countries are just uglier countries so sorry if you're from there um prove us wrong we don't know maybe they just but even pick- the americans i was like you know. oh here i have a question you know how they would show multiple teams like running off and getting into the bobsled? Do you think those were just the same people doing it over and over again in different uniforms? Good question. I don't know. Because uh, they actually did use footage from the real Olympics in this movie. So maybe oh, not. Maybe it was that. Because I was like, you really went out and found like 30 f- people to come and dress up as bobsledders, which like that part is fine. But like, and then do the run. I don't think so. I don't think he did that. But that was my question. I want, okay, we did get kind of the order a little wrong because the disqualification came after they did qualify the time, which was when they started taking stuff seriously because 
we find out that Yule cheat or not Yule. Oh my gosh. We find out that Irv cheated first from when Doris is cleaning the sled, the sled. And this one of the former American teammates, I'm guessing, comes up and kind of tells him about it. But Doris just it he kind of goes to his head, like, oh, he lied or didn't tell us this. Then he and Irv have a talk. And Irv is basically telling him, like, you guys need to be more serious and stuff like that. But then Doris calls him out kind of on like the whole cheating thing, like, why'd you do it? And we get, I think one of the best quotes of the day, I think, or the movie was from this. And I'm trying to find it, right? It was like it's about the gold medal, or is that yeah? Different? It was it was like when he said winning was because I have that quote okay yeah I have the quote about the gold medal at one point he says he being coach Irv a gold medal is a wonderful thing but if you're not enough without it you won't be enough with it which I think is an amazing quote like props to the writers because I know for dang sure no real person said this um but I love that because he was like winning is everything and I made it everything and I had to win or else I wasn't good enough. But, you know, he, then he says the quote and Doris just looks at me. He's like, how do I know if I'm good enough without it? And he doesn't really ever answer the question for Doris and stuff, which I like, you know, he's just like, you have to like, find that out for yourself. We see Yule and Junior bonding for the first time. They like went to a bar and like, things happened there and junior couldn't stand up for himself and his dad also shows up and is like or send him a telegram saying you have to come home and that was not cool and and junior's like well I gotta do it and Yule's like look in the mirror and what do you see you know and he doesn't he just says like I don't know a, a kid or something like he doesn't see you know a strong man who can make decisions for himself but then Yule goes, I see pride, I see power, I see a badass mother who won't take nothing from no one or something like that. And so that is just repeated over and over. And finally, when Junior's dad does show up, okay, and is like, you're coming home. Because Junior's dad set up this whole thing where he's going to go to Miami, he's going to work for this really big like finance company or something. And Junior, like, is committed to the bobsled team at this point, hasn't told his dad. He's literally in Calgary, and his dad thinks he's in Miami. He thinks he's loaned his car to somebody, when in reality, he sold it so that they could afford to go to Calgary. All of this stuff. Like, Junior feels so bad that he's the reason these two men have not made it to the Olympics, that he is doing everything to make sure that they can make it to the Olympics. He is the most committed, basically, on the team besides Doris at this point. And when his dad shows up, he's like, I have to go. I have to do it. And as the elevator's closing, he's like, I see pride. I see power. And then he's like, dad, I'm not going. I'm staying. And if you don't like it, like that sucks for you. And like stands up to him. And when the elevator door finally closes and the dad goes down, he looks over and Yule's like, junior, you're one badass mother. <laughs> like, it was just so cute. And then they wake up the next morning, everyone they wake up Irv and are like, it's butt whooping time. And they take it seriously for the first time. They come up with like the, this great countdown because Doris was just trying to be the Swiss team and copying them with like the Ein Spy dry or whatever and counting in German for them. But I don't know. They come up with this like amazing, cute little um, thing that's for them. Because what does Senka say that gets Doris to like change the way he thinks about it? Because Doris keeps going at it, like Rachel said, with this Swedish approach, or right? they're going Eins by dry, which is actually German. I also read that in real life, it they were it was something similar to that, but instead of like Eins by dry, it's like uns zu, <laughs> like it's something like that, which is funny. Um, but then Senka says, "Man, like we're from Jamaica." Um, 
you know, we can't try to be this other team. We're not them. We come from Jamaica. We are Jamaicans. We should be proud of our team. And we can't do it like them. We have to do it like us. Trying to be someone else is not going to work. And then he hears that. And then when they have their own beginning chant, um, I can't remember what it says, but it ends with, it's bobsled time. <laughs> and then they do it that way and they get their fastest time and in the film I can't remember if they get the fastest start time or whatever but in actuality in real life they ended up getting the seventh fastest start time which for two of your team members getting like three weeks to train I would say that's pretty damn good yeah so I don't remember what they said in there either but they ended up with the eighth fastest time overall which is crazy and that's, yeah, they got the qualifying time when they did the more Jamaican centric countdown. And they also came up with the name Cool Runnings um, on it. And, or actually, they counted down in German and choked, but they still qualified, I thought. Or no, I don't know. Yeah, it was like the first race, they did it in German and they still qualified. But then the next day, when it was like when it actually mattered or whatever, like the second race, um, they were all like, oh, um, do you think it's going to, let's hope their run's better than yesterday. And that's when they changed to Jamaica. And then everyone's rooting for Jamaica. And something that irritated me was the announcers, like, I don't know if they're supposed to not be choosing sides, but they definitely chose Jamaica. They made it very clear. And one of them goes, go jams. And I was like, what? Mm-hmm. I don't know that made me uncomfortable but what ends up happening is not something you're probably expecting because usually a movie like this you know you get everything you want that's just kind of the theme and what happens is they end up crashing so you get what you want because they did not die because you know you're assuming they're all dead they're not they show the greatest act of courage I guess And what do they do, Rachel? They basically, you see all of the medics coming down to save them, right? But they, all of a sudden the medics are parting ways because the Jamaicans have the bobsleds on their shoulders and they're like, we need to finish this race. You know, I don't care if our time's 19 minutes, like we're going across it and they, they walk it across and everyone slow claps as you do in a movie, which sad moment, uh, didn't happen in real life. They didn't slow clap for them. Slow claps don't happen in real life on a whim. Apparently cinema, you've lied to me, but it, I literally wrote multiple times. I'm like, why am I crying at work right now? Because <laughs> like, I watched this at work. I'm like, this movie made me want to cry so many times. But the slow clap too, which I admired, didn't sound like a pity clap. You know, when like you're clapping for the person who fell in the hundred meter dash to finish or tripped over their hurdle. And you're like, oh, you've got it. Good job finishing. No, it felt like pride and like, it didn't feel like pity, which I was like, pride, power. <laughs> you are one badass mother who will take nothing from no one. Hell yeah. So I loved that. I don't know how they did it. It didn't sound like pity. So mm, that's all I got to say there. This movie, just like I said, made me cry. It was wonderful. It's like the underdog story. It's the extreme fish out of water underdog story you're asking for. Hannah, did you look up movie versus real life? Yeah, I did look up some and maybe you found some more things than I did, but it's like none of the names are the same. You know, it's all is like fiction. Yeah. (laughs) But it's based on the real thing. (laughs) Yeah. The only true part really is that like the only thing that wasn't edited basically was that four Jamaicans made a bobsled team and made it to the 1988 Olympics. And the whole crash thing actually did happen. Right. But the way it ended didn't happen. Like, right. they, the, the director apparently said like, yeah, we couldn't get away with this today. <laughs> because it's yeah. based on such true events. I think that's why they couldn't get away with it today. If it was like 
a fake Olympics in the future or like based on real people, but it wasn't centered around such like distinct things that you can google you know what i mean like the 1980 olympics they were the first to make a bobsled team these are their names this these were their coaches this was their qualifying time all of that stuff i think if it wasn't so easily and a lot of people didn't remember it and look it up or if they didn't add like a fantastical element to it you know it's basically a real movie that takes place in real life you know it's not fictionalized in a way where there's like ghosts or vampires or anything i think that's why they can't get away with it today so I don't know I was but I love the movie it's one of the best movies like we said consistently but there's a lot that's changed I don't know what are some of your changes you found Hannah well I guess this isn't necessarily talking about change but did you know that this was first written as a drama and it was tried to be made and the man who played Senka who's known his name's Doug E. Doug he was going to be on the project and then it got canceled like no one wanted to do it because they just didn't take it seriously enough it was rewritten I don't know if I'm remembering this date correctly I could be wildly off but for some reason it's like eight years later they wrote it as a comedy and somehow now Dougie Doug was back on and he was doing it as Sanka but he was nervous to do it as a comedy because obviously he didn't want to offend anyone and another fact about him is that he still has the egg well as of like a few years ago he still had the egg um because he has a lucky egg and they were made out of rubber which I was like oh it wasn't a real egg that's so funny I was wondering where he would put that egg when he had his like Jamaican suit on but they answered that question for me eventually um it's just in his pants in a place I'm sure you could guess (laughs) yeah so like we said none of these four men existed at all neither did the coach oh yeah the coach there's multiple coaches there were four guys who were from the Jamaican army And the only reason they really joined was because their colonel told them to, because one of the things that was pretty similar was basically no one wanted to be part of this. And so they kind of represented that in the movie when Irv shows the video and the packed room is empty at the end of it, which is still such a funny scene. Also, yeah, they weren't sprinters. I think they ran, but when you're in the army, you have to be fit. So that makes sense there. Well, more so back in the day. There's like, no offense to anyone in the army now or something, but I, I feel like I remember seeing recently that they've changed their, you only have to like do a mile in 15 minutes. That could be wrong, but it's like, hello, you can walk that. You can walk that. You can. Um, maybe it's because no one wants to go fight. And I understand that. But um, something that's way different is that in the movie, everyone is hating on the bobsled, the Jamaican bobsled team. No one wants a part at all with them. But in reality, everyone was super excited. And I can't remember the real man's name, but Doris, the guy who is Doris in real life, said that, you know, in sports, that's just not the way it is. Obviously, there's competition and people might be like, oh, blah, blah, blah. But like, you are warm and inviting and you're excited for the other people and that was actually how it happened in real life unless there's one specific person you have beef with that you know from your past that did something dirty to you you're not gonna be like the Jamaicans oh who do they think they are being here gross like no the two Americans, like I said, started it after they watched a push cart derby and they were extremely wealthy. So no one had to sell their car to make it to the Olympics. Like they funded it all themselves. The crash is a little different. So I like, because these four guys were so likable and so wonderful in the movie. I'm glad that they switched how it crashed because in the movie, it's because their bobsled's so rickety. I'm shocked no one checked on it, but whatever. Um, but something came unscrewed and that caused the crash. Whereas in real life, whoever was the Doris of it all, um, it was driver error, which obviously they're super inexperienced. Like we said, they had very few months and some of them just weeks. I think one of the guy's brothers joined three days before they had to go on because someone got injured. If someone asked me, hey, Rachel, do you want to be on our basketball team real quick? Um, We're going to go play in the Olympics. I'd be like, "Ah, 
you're so funny. No, absolutely not. I would rather die. It's fine. No thanks. Um, would you do a Bob like not necessarily by yourself, but if you were in a bobsled with let's say three other olympians and then you got to just like go for a ride would you do it no it's too dangerous yeah i wrote down i would shat myself going down that like i would (laughs) i just i am not scared of a lot of things but like going down 80 miles an hour this ice tunnel tube mm, i've experienced ice i live in the midwest i live in the north i live in the second coldest city in all of the united states i've seen some ice in my day i don't want to be shooting down a hill in the ice that seems like the worst idea i would definitely break a neck or something i don't know absolutely something that's different very different so Irv, like we said, gets disqualified, has to give back his Olympic medals because he added weights to his sled, which that is completely false because in bobsledding, your sled has to weigh a certain amount. So if you and your other team members don't weigh enough, they have to put weights in to make sure it weighs enough. Otherwise, it's too dangerous. Just like you can't have like too much weight in your sled. The sled cannot be overweight. Otherwise, once again, that's too dangerous. You're going to be going way too fast. So that whole concept, wrong, wrong. <laughs> fake news (laughs) also the americans hadn't been in like metal contention for that event since like the 40s so let alone like having had medals that were taken away in the 70s like that just didn't happen also this movie though it was the events happened in 1988 and this movie came out in like either 93 or 95 or something i'm like that's a quick turnaround for a movie based on a real event You know what I mean? Usually they're waiting like 20 years before a movie comes out. That is very true. I'm looking up right now what year it came out in 1993. Yeah. So 88 to 93 is like five years. So yeah. yeah. And you have to remember this was already written first as a drama. And then there was the fact that. So it was not eight years later or whatever I said before. It must have been like years later well between the two writings I'm assuming that it must have been like two years or something yeah so that's interesting um now something that I find very funny is that in different places there were different titles to this movie so in America and I don't know where else but in America it is known as cool runnings okay we love that in Norway (laughs) literally called cold buttocks <laughs> and in france this one was my favorite it's not as funny as norway france it's called rasta rocket which i just think that that has a nice ring to it but in norway it's literally called cold buttocks <laughs> uh, i mean Sanka alone would be like yes absolutely that's accurate <laughs> but that's really funny um I will say I have a fun fact on what cool runnings means hold on yeah, Bear you with me. give us any fun facts or anything that is all the info I wrote down but something I guess a fun fact about me for the movie Rachel said she remembers watching it on VHS I had a childhood best friend growing up if you're listening to this somehow hi Krista your new baby is very cute um it's so weird that we're at the age now that we could like have offspring I don't know weird but congratulations to you and your happy little family anyway every year on her birthday we would get to have a sleepover and watch a movie and I swear we always picked this movie and every year is like it just got funnier and funnier and it's just such a good memory from my childhood is being at her house being in our little sleeping bags and watching this movie and we wanted to be bobsledders back then I think but now like I've already stated I would chat myself I wanted to be an Olympic speed skater as a child so I don't know why these weird I think it's because Apollo Ono was so huge for a while and my friend Juliet was interested in speed skating she did ice skating and figure skating and stuff but 
got me into thinking that speed skating was super cool except after I saw a video of someone's skate because the skates are like this long they're extra long things after I saw a video of one of them inside someone's thigh I was like absolutely not I would chop my head off somehow I do it I don't know how well how actually you it? would chop your leg off probably but you know no I'd end up chopping my head off because that's how uncoordinated I somehow would become cool runnings means peace be the journey don't know if that's actual a real fact but it does mean that in the movie so it's very cute that's cool overall I rate this movie highly I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 only because that would be like for reserve for my favorite movie ever which I don't think I could tell you which one that is but I think I'd give it an 8 or 9 out of 10 like I definitely recommend I think it's a good story I think it's funny I think that it shows good growth in people. I could watch it over and over again. Watch it. It's so good. So good. We actually, fun fact about this podcast, we're supposed to watch Soul Surfer because Hannah's not a big sports movie person and- Or sports fan in general. Thank you. (laughs) I was like, okay, Hannah, do you have any movies that you specifically want to watch? you know, this month and said, you know, soul surfer. Absolutely. So I was like, of course I thought it was on Disney plus if not there, I thought it was going to be somewhere like, uh, of course it should be. No, of course not. It's literally only for renting with money, which (laughs) absolutely not would rather die. And so Hannah chose cool runnings instead, which was a great choice. And the rest this month actually were chosen somewhat by y'all because we had our little poll going out you will see on the instagram post that was posted two weeks ago now that you'll know the sneak peek of what films and tv shows we're watching and what won but if you don't know and didn't check that out one go follow us on instagram at you talking to me dot podcast where you been to Um, check us out next week because the one that won for next week was gymnastics so we will be watching the documentary athlete a and I just want to say trigger warning right now if you do not know about the Larry Nassar trial and the the big scandal that happened with him the trainer or doctor on the team briefly look that up before to see if this is something you want to you know, put yourself through and watch. If not, we'll see you the next week with a more not so triggering thing, but there still will be some triggering things in all of these sports movies because sports deal with a lot of things. But yeah, anyway, we're going to be watching that documentary for next week. Follow us on Twitter at you talking to me 11 because we're both number one. Email us questions, suggestions, you know, movie themes that you want us to be watching so that you have a say in what we do because we want to hear from y'all. That would be emailing us at youtalkingtomepodcast at gmail.com and eh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I was like, there's got to be something else. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos, hit the notification bell, leave us comments down there, what you liked or disliked about each episode and leave us wonderful reviews on any podcast site you are listening to us on. Or if you want to tell us a specific holiday movie you want us to watch next month, we have not at this moment that we're recording decided on all of those. So if you have something you would like us to watch, you can do so now. But with that, that is our podcast for today. My name is Hannah. And I'm Rachel. And this was the You Talking to Me podcast. Bye. Bye.